This is the second part of the dynamic trimming video between MIDI Composer and Final Cut 10. I wanted to separate this video and talk about slip and slide trimming because in my opinion slipping and sliding is one of the more important or as important as doing basic trimming of edit points because slipping and sliding, especially slipping, is very handy when you're doing, um, doing editorial. In MIDI Composer, to go into a uh, slip trim, I could click and drag around one clip or two clips if I wanted to, to go into a slip trim mode. But in this case, let's just go into this one clip here. Let's say we wanted to do something simple like move this f forward uh, one second and take that to, um, to 11. I can click on the clip, go into trim mode, and I get the slip trim interface in the Composer window here. And what this is showing me is the first frame of the clip that I'm slipping and the last frame of the clip that I'm slipping, as well as the outgoing frame of the clip before and the incoming frame of the, frame of the clip after, which is just kind of a nice view when you're, uh, when you're doing your slipping and sliding. In this case, I have this clip here. It starts at uh, 10 seconds. If I was told, hey, I want to move that and slip that one second to make that start at 11, I could go into my, my slip trim and just say plus 24 because I'm in a 24 frame per second project. And that makes that change there. I can hit the space bar, preview that edit. Now I have a very short pre-roll. I'm going to go and just make that a bit longer. At, um, let's make that two seconds. And when I hit the uh, space bar, I get that preview there. And that's just going to now play the entire trim, play all the way through. It's going to loop back to the, uh, to the front and replay that again. And I just made a slip trim by using the keyboard. But to dynamically do that, which is where it gets really nice, I could then click into that mode and I could just then begin to JKL scrub through this clip. I can see the clip playing in the window above and that's showing me the, the frame playback as it moves. And I can see down here in the timeline that slip trim has continued to play and it has reached the end of that clip. So now when I hit the space bar, it's going to now preview that edit that I just made. And I, and I slipped that entire clip all the way to the end. Now, I could put my cursor over the second window and I'll see that window play back as I make the trim. So it just depends on where my cursor is placed as to which of the trim windows I'm going to see, whether it's the incoming frame or the first frame of the clip or the last frame of the clip. And I can JKL scrub. And you can see, if you watch down here, you can see the, um, the, trim, the little trim window playheads moving as I JKL scrub back and forth. And that's just a very quick and easy, nice way to be able to actually watch your clips as you're making the slip trim. In Final Cut Pro 10, you do have an option for slipping and sliding trim. You have to go to the trim tool, and by default, when you click in the middle of a clip in the trim tool, you are getting a slip trim, and you can drag back and forth to make a slip trim, and you can see you, we also get a similar window that pops up here in our viewer as we make that trim where we're seeing the first frame and the last frame, but we're not seeing the preceding clip frame or the clip, the first frame of the clip after. But that is one way to make a slip trim in uh, Final Cut 10. In our case, where we're looking at uh, the, where we wanted to start the clip or move the clip a specific amount of um, frames, we start that this clip here starts at uh, 10 seconds. If I wanted to um, move that forward one second to take it to 11, spinal tap reference there. I could um, click that as I'm now in a slip trim in Final Cut 10. And if I hit uh, plus 24, you can see that's moving forward a second. If I hit plus 24, plus 24, and I hit return, it actually moves it back backwards to nine seconds instead of 10 because that's not really sure why Apple chose to make the plus and minus keys sort of move it in an opposite direction than you would expect, but it would actually be, and I'm going to hit undo, but watch what happens when I hit undo. It's going to take me out of that, uh, the, tr the um, slip trim selection that I had, so I need to click and move back into that again. It'd actually be move it minus 24 frames to move it to 11. Now what's happening there is Final Cut 10 is looking at it sort of like you are making the trim with dragging the tool because if you think about how the clip would be moving, if I was dragging backwards, I would be moving the clip to the left. So I would be actually taking the clip later in time and it's thinking when you do the plus and minus on the keypad, it's thinking like you are 
slipping it as you were dragging, which is kind of, to me, it's sort of the opposite of what you think with your brain when you say, I want to go plus 24, I want to move forward 24 frames, which is just a choice that the, uh, that the designers made, or at least that's the way I'm interpreting that. You can also, um, I'm going to do an undo to get back to where we were with, um, at the 10 second. You can also just use the, uh, the period and the comma key to do a um, slip trim. Oop. I went out of trim mode there. You got to be careful when you're trimming with the trim tool because sometimes it may take you out of a mode. Like what I want to do here, I want to sit on this first frame and be able to make that slip trim. So I, I've parked my playhead there and my skimmer's there. And now I can hit the plus and the minus key to um, start to make that trim. And so there I'm I'm at 10. If I wanted to move forward to 11, I could, I could also hit the shift key and make those um, increments jump a lot bigger. So that's another way to uh, to make that. But what I don't have is the ability to actually play that trim back like I did in MIDI Composer because there is no dynamic trimming of slip and slide trim. So it'd be just a matter of having to, you know, hold the the um, the uh, period or the comma key down, or to let it sort of trim that way. So it's not quite as, in my mind, it's not quite as easy or as or as fluid to make a slip and slide trim because I'm not able to dynamically make that trim. Yes, I can click and drag, but it's just not quite the same as doing that in a playback situation. Back in MIDI Composer, I also have the option of using the period and the comma key to make a slip trim as well. In this case, you just park the playhead in whatever clip you have, whatever track you have highlighted when you hit the period or the um, comma key you'll, you'll be able to make single frame trims or you could use the M or the backslash key to make trims in bigger and in bigger increments so it works kind of a kind of a similar way but again in my mind it's not near as easy as just clicking in hitting the JKL and starting to make a um, dynamic slip trim we can also do dynamic slide trims in MIDI Composer if I go to this halo clip here and I want to slide that I could Instead of um, just dragging from the right to the left, which takes me into a slip mode, I could hold down Shift and Option as I drag, and that takes me into a slide mode. And when I do that, and I hit J, it starts moving this clip backwards, because I'm trimming backwards. And when I stop the playback, you can see the clip has slid back in the timeline. Now, it moved 92 frames out of sync, because I didn't choose to trim the audio as well. So I'm going to undo that. And then I'm going to turn on my link selection and click that and I'm going to actually go into trim mode and you can see it's taking me to a slip trim but I'll just hit shift and I can click the rollers on the outside of the clip and now I'm going to be trimming the whole clip as I make my slide trim here. Now by doing this if you look at the composer window the first frame and last frame of the clip that I'm sliding will not move as I play back. What will move I'll see playback for the outgoing frame of the clip before and the incoming frame of the clip after because as we make the slide trim we are either affecting we're, we're affecting the clip before and after because we're shortening or making longer depending on the way in which we're trimming but if I watch up here in my composer window I'm going to put my cursor over the one as I hit J and play backwards you can see that that's the uh, frame that's moving I can move my playhead over here to the right window as I hit J and play backwards I'll now see the playback of that particular clip and I can JKL scrub if you look to the timeline and you can see that moving as I do the JKL scrubbing through the timeline so it's a very dynamic way in which to do a slip and slide trim and I can also make use of multiple clips as I want to slip and slide so if I hit option shift I'm going to drag over the halo clip as well as the clip number two, I'm now going to be sliding two clips instead of just one. So I can just hit JKL scrub, hit playback, and you'll see those clips actually, the two clips sliding as I make the trim. Hit spacebar, and now get playback of the trim itself. In Final Cut 10, we can also do a slide trim. If you have your trim tool selected and you click on the clip, you get the slip trim option, as we see there. And if you look at the, uh, the yellow trim indicators, you can see they're on the inside of the clip, which is kind of like what we're seeing with those pink rollers in MIDI Composer. If I hit option, the cursor will change to a slide trim cursor. When I click, you'll see the yellow trim indicators moving to the outside of the clip. So now as I click and drag, I am now making a slide um, trim with that clip. And you can see I've detached the audio here, but it's still connected and it moves along with the clip as I, as I make the slide. Now, there is no, again, no dynamic way to make this. I'm having to uh, do this by clicking and dragging. And if I'm not holding down the option when I click, it's gonna go back into a slip trim. 
I can make a dynamic slide trim with the keyboard if I go into my trim mode. And let's say I wanted to, tr to slip or slide the clip on this frame 200 and see what happens to this frame 200. Watch what happens as I start to make that uh, trim with the keyboard with my, with my cursor or sort of off the clip skimming. When I do that, it's going to move the playhead back to a different point now. If I wanted to be sure I was watching that frame 200, or a specific frame, I just need to move down in the clip skimming mode. And when I do that, whether you're in slip or slide trim, Final Cut 10 will then show you that frame as, as the slip or slide happens behind that particular frame, which is very nice. But now I'm making that the slide trim just by using the keyboard and I can shift and period to do that in uh, bigger increments. You can also make a slip in the slide trim without even being in trim mode. If I'm in select mode and you just click on the clip, you'll actually make a slide trim as well without having to be in trim mode or actually in the trim tool. But in the trim tool, when I make a, slick, a slip and slide mode, let's watch what happens in the viewer here. I'm in my, if I slip, I get the first and last frame of the clip that I'm slipping, which is good. When I go into slide mode, as I click and I start to drag, after I was in slip mode, I'm only seeing the last frame of the uh, outgoing clip. But now when I let up off option, I'll see the incoming frame of the next clip. As you can see, it's the one and the two here. So that's good that the viewer is showing me exactly what I need to see. So it's kind of showing me a similar thing to what Media Composer was showing me with a sort of a two up display instead of that four up display that Media Composer has. If I was just um, didn't have anything selected and I hovered over a clip and I hit option to go into slide mode, when I hit click and start to drag, I'll get that two, that two frame up display as I make the um, as I make the, the slide. But now there's no way that I can slip or slide multiple clips at a time. It's one or the other. I'm hitting shift here to try to select more than one clip. You know, I'm dragging around. I'm not getting any kind of slip modes as I drag around clips and hold down modifier keys. So you're really only slipping and sliding one clip at a time as far as I can tell. I can't find any way to um, slip and slide more than one clip at a time as hard as I try to uh, click and do other things. I'll wrap up this with some practical application of these dynamic trimming techniques in Media Composer with this narrative piece and try to illustrate how sort of how nice the dynamic trimming can be, especially with something like a, like a narrative. This is footage from uh, edictstock.com, their bully commercial that can be uh, purchased for download for practicing. So what we have here is uh, it's a couple of clips here. Sorry, kid. Got to make room for the big boys. It's not terribly uh, finessed very well, so I can use the dynamic trimming to do a couple of things here. First, I'm just going to go into um, a regular uh, ripple trim mode, and I want to actually bring the guy in a lot faster. Sorry. So now with my, I'm in my trim mode, I can just hit L and sort of trim that up and watch him walk in. And I'm just kind of scrub rolling back and forth, and when I get to where I like, I'm going to hit the space bar, preview. Sorry, kid. It looks pretty good, but if you listen, you can hear the audio Sorry, kid. just cutting in, so I'm just going to turn off my uh, track one, and I'm going to just sort of roll that audio back where I don't have that, um, that hard cut. I've got the ambient sound happening there. Now, another problem I saw with the, uh, with the clip was that I think that the Got to make room. boy should come in earlier. Sorry, kid. Sorry, kid. Got to make room for probably come in when he says sorry, kid. So I can go into my slide trim and just using JKL scrubbing, I'm going to um, just sort of scrub that clip back. Sorry, kid. Got to make room for the And I can just finesse that a little bit. Sorry, kid. Got to make room for the big boys. So I like that. That's that's kind of help. I'm going to make my pre roll a little bit bigger so I can see it. Sorry, kid. Got to make room for the so that's pretty good. I think that's timed right. Now, I don't necessarily like the take of this kid looking up boy. like this. So the slip trimming lets me actually make use of the JKL scrubbing and the dynamic playback to, to look at a lot of takes at once. Because if I match frame this, I can see that the director did many takes at a time. And what I could do is I could go back in and I could play up, play from here and sort of select my different takes and just drop them into the timeline. But with the dynamic trimming, I can go into my slip and slide trim and just by watching the, uh, the frame here, I can now just start to play forward. Make room for the big boys. And when I see a different take, I'm just going to JKL scrub. 
Oh, that looks like a good one where he puts his arms down. I just was able to play follower 211 frames. Sorry, kid. Got to make room for the big boy. That's kind of nice, but I can keep scanning forward and see if, if there's a better take that I like. The next one is uh, happens right there. I'm gonna hit spacebar, preview that. Sorry, kid. Got to make room for that one's not near as good. I'm just gonna keep scrubbing forward. There's another one there. Sorry, kid. Got to make room for that one's the not boys. as good either. I can just keep scrubbing forward even more. And it uh, looks like the end, so I'm going to go back to that one at 211 frames, and that's the one that I seem to really like. And just by JKL scrubbing, I'm able to kind of roll back. Sorry, kid. Got to make room. Go back just a little bit, and I can obviously hit J and K and go back eight frames at a time. Sorry, kid. Got to make room for I'm going to hit the, the period just a single frame at a time and start it about right there. Hit spacebar. Sorry, kid. Got to make room for the big boys. And with that, I've used many of those different trimming techniques dynamically to sort of tweak up this scene. So hopefully that kind of gives an idea of the power of dynamic trimming and why a lot of people really like it. I personally love dynamic trimming and I wish that all the other NLEs would adapt to the MIDI Composer model. But this comparison was just trying to show a little bit of the difference between the trimming modes of MIDI Composer and Final Cut 10.